Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be discussing the difference between arterial and venous ulcers and how to actually recognize the difference. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow. So arterial ulcers, they develop as a result of damage to the arteries due to a lack of blood flow to the tissues. So as shown right here, so our arteries bring our blood from our heart to our tissues, okay, so our limbs. So the arteries bring the blood flow down. If we're not getting proper blood flow down, we can get arterial ulcers. Okay, and then the venous ulcers, they can develop from damage to the veins, okay, um, caused by an insufficiency of returned blood back to the heart, okay. So our venous system brings our blood back to our heart, so the blood moving upwards. If our blood is coming down okay, but can't get back up, that's when we can get a venous ulcer. Okay, so now we'll get into the etiology and really what it looks like to have an arterial ulcer or a venous ulcer. Now, the arterial ulcer, it has that very punched out appearance, okay? So it looks like the skin has just been removed from that area. It's very punched out. Now, um, the tissue, the wound tissue is very pale. It can be necrotic. Um, there's minimal exudate to these wounds. Um, pale skin, shiny, taunt, thin, and an absence of hair. So um, that's it's always something to ask, especially because females, they shave their legs. Um, but with arterial ulcers, you, you got to be asking if they regularly have hair on their legs or if they've just shaved it because there will be no hair or very, very minimal hair present on their legs with arterial disease, okay? Now, our venous ulcers, they differ from the arterial ulcers because they are very irregular, okay? Irregular shaped, um, it's a very like red, granular wound, you have that moderate to high amount of exudate. Now this is normally from edema because when you have venous ulcers, you have venous disease. So the blood isn't flowing back to the heart properly. That means you're going to have that swelling there. Um, so that's why we have more exudate in these wounds because it's an easy way out for that fluid, okay? Um, we can also get that hemosiderin stain. So it's like that brown, if you can see right here, that brown stain on the skin, okay? That comes with venous disease, okay? And then just, yeah, our firm edema. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. You can really tell the difference. Um, the only problem that comes in factor is when people have mixed etiologies, which is very common nowadays. So that's why our ABPIs are so important to get before ever putting someone in a compression, okay? Because yes, with venous ulcers, we need compression therapy to heal that wound, okay? Without compression therapy, it's going to be super, super difficult to have a healed venous light ulcer. But when we have a mixed etiology and we have our blood doesn't wanna go back up, but it also doesn't wanna come down to our feet, if we're putting a strong compression on that, it's going to stop the blood flow even more and we could have major problems such as like toes going necrotic. Okay, so we really have to be doing the ABPIs to ensure the etiology, even though we can visualize and see ABPIs very, very important. So I hope you did find this video very helpful and you can now recognize the difference between an arterial and venous ulcer. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.